Okay, I am going to declare a quorum and call the City of Groton Mayor and Council meeting for Tuesday, February 18, 2020 to order. Clerk Patrick, please call the roll. Present are Mayor Keith Hedrick, Councilors, Deputy, uh, Councilors, Councilors Lisa McKay, Reginald Stanford, Guinevere Devon, Reva Ortiz, Michelle Carter, Clerk Deborah Patrick, excused our Deputy Mayor Jamal Beckford, and Finance Director Ron Lewis. Okay, thank you. We stand and salute the flag. Diego, will you lead us? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Recognitions, awards, and memorials. I have a couple things that I want to put out. The state of Connecticut at the direction of the public safety commissioner James C. Ravel is creating law enforcement, mental health, and wellness grant team. This group will seek to make broad and sweeping recommendations for the Connecticut Law Enforcement Peer Program Council. They will seek to standardize existing training for peer support programs and expand outreach to agencies who do not have one. Officer Bobby Harris was selected to this group to assist in this mission. In this mission. This council will involve federal, state, and local officers, tribal officers, mental health professionals, legislators, post personnel, staff personnel, and clergy, and law enforcement advocates. It's an honor that Officer Harris was selected in work that will benefit his profession and their loved ones. Officer Lesage, who currently serves as our youth officer, will move to serve as our court evidence accreditation pistol permit position. Officer Lesage is a senior member of our agency and looks forward to the challenge. Our agency has been accredited and reaccredited, seeks to maintain accreditation yet again and an assessment to be conducted next year. Officer Lesage demonstrated during interviews his knowledge and focus to meet agency goals. Officer Lesage is a law enforcement communication instructor and decorated for a nationally recognized water rescue of an elderly and trapped operator at Eastern Point Beach in 2016. And lastly, <coughs> Corporal Brittany Dela Cruz has been chosen as our future youth officer. She is an agency veteran and FTO volunteering with our cadet program. She was our 2019 Officer of the Year and has been very active in agency public outreach and youth events. She is very popular with local youth due to her outreach efforts and is a former Fitch High School and UConn standout athlete. She'll be DARE certified in the near future and excited to serve in the position. So I wanted to uh, congratulate all three of those officers and to bring recognition to what our police force is doing here for the city, right? Uh, <clears throat> receive the citizen petitions and comment. Oh, wait, I have one more. I also have <clears throat> this. This is the campaign award for impactful participation from the United Way of Southeastern Connecticut. As for the City of Groton and employees, thank you for participating in the United Way 2019-2020 campaign. Your support of United Way Southeastern Connecticut is changing lives and helping people in need throughout the community. So we got an award for our participation. All right, the next portion of our uh, agenda receipt of citizens' petitions, comments. Do we have anyone signed up? Yep. Okay. Before I go through the whole spiel, is there anyone who would like to speak in citizens petitions? I do have one uh, email that I received from William Borsowitz. I would like to take this time to address the issue of, of charging guests at a reduced rate from 5 p.m. 5 to 8 p.m. I've been a member of the Beach and Parks Committee for two years. And in that time, we reviewed all aspects of this at great lengths. We determined that if we decided to not charge after 5 p.m., that the city would lose money and not be able to cover the maintenance of the beach. Charging a reduced rate allows the city to pay the labor that is necessary to ensure the bathrooms are clean and the garbage is empty. East Lyme and Waterford closed at 5 p.m. and shut down all services and bathrooms. 
this would be one option that the council could consider if they no longer want to charge after 5 p.m. The concession stand would need to be closed and all bathrooms. I do not see how the services can remain open after 5 p.m. if guests are not charged. Another option would be to reduce the rate again for citizen city residents and continue to charge non-residents, non-city residents, a higher rate. Thank you for letting me submit this email as part of the meeting. Thanks, Bill Borsowitz and 28 Country Club Road. And I think all the council has a copy of this at your stations. Well, do do you want to shoot? Sure. Yes. So come up, grab the microphone, state your uh, name and address. My name is Gail Kelly. I'm here from Hi, my name is Gail Kelly. I live at 167 Mayor Drive, Groton, Connecticut. I'm also a member of the um, Groton City Beach and Park Committee and have been for several years. Um, this um, issue of charging at the gate between six and eight, that's been on, yeah, it's been come up for discussion several times. I've always been opposed to it from the very beginning and I just want to make a short statement. Um, I am in favor of stopping charging at the gate at six o'clock. Um, I feel that working family, Groton families, excuse me, paying extra taxes for beach rights would like to visit the beach. Um, their impact may not necessarily have, you know, they may be there just to watch a sunset or take a walk. Um, and they don't feel that they want to pay to go there from six to eight. And I feel that this current policy is not very community friendly. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak a citizen's petition? Okay, thank you. Response to citizen's petition, council. Okay. Approval of minutes, I need a motion to approve the February 3rd, 2020 mayor and council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, changes, amendments, or changes? Additions, Additions deletions, thank you. Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Communications and reports. We have with us tonight Diego Ocasio to present his project on the Birch Wayne Creek Eagle Scout project. I know earlier this year, Diego presented to us about what he wanted to do at Birch Plain Creek. He has completed that, and I've asked him to come and present to the council so that uh, so that you can see what he's done. Technology different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diego, if I can get you to speak into the microphone. Yes, all Thank right. You. So, this is uh, Eagle Scout project after. So, I had come previously to um, pitch my idea for what I had wanted to do for an Eagle Scout project and it was to uh, clean up Birch Plain Creek, an area here in Groton. Um, right here were the before pictures that I had presented here at City Council sometime prior to October of last year. So you could see the area had overgrowing grass covering many of parts of it, including the pathways, and it made it nearly impossible to see the cement circle, which was a place that I used to visit quite often as you can see in the bottom right area, it was overgrown with what was called uh, Japanese thorn weeds, a bunch of weeds out there that covered up the entire area, blocking it off from, from anyone being able to see it. So my idea was to come by to mow through the area, cut down any of the vines that blocked the way, to trim away the thorn weeds, to open up the space and plant some flowers, as well as cutting the path so people would know where they were able to walk and to see all the sites there. 
So these are some images from during the project. Um, the project was a two-day project on October 5th and 6th. Day one was six and a half hours of work. Day two was two and a half hours. Um, day one primarily was me and everyone else who had come to help cutting down the weeds and mowing the grass on the pathway. So the first step was to cut down the weeds that were blocking the area from being accessible. There was only one area you could walk to, but you could, had to walk through high grass to get to it. So we trimmed away at all the weeds in the front area so it would be easier to access. And then once we got in there, we started chipping away at the weeds surrounding the circle, making it easier to walk so that we would know where to lay down the plants for later. And then eventually towards middle, towards the end of the day as well, we started going at the Japanese thorn weeds. Um, there were two large ones in the center that primarily took a lot of work to get rid of. Um, we had to trim away at some of the roots as well and uproot it because it was growing in deep down. Some of their photos from during process. A lot of the process after cutting down, we had to roll out some tarps so that we could lay down some of the leaves and branches that were cut down from it so that we can remove it from the area to clear it out. Um, there was also a lot of using of clippers and pickaxes to get up at the roots and trimming away at the deeper roots that we couldn't get with the clippers. Also, near the parking lot in an area towards the right, there was a tube television. So during the day of the project, I had a sign for me and my friends to go out and remove that from the area. So we went in there, took it out, placed it to the side so that it was no longer um, back there, just taking up space. Also on the project, we did find another back to a flat screen TV out back there. So we removed that as well. So these are some pictures from afterwards. Um, so as you can see, all the area of all the weeds around the circle and in it have been removed. Most of the leaves and dirt and grass was moved out the way so that we could plant in new dirt so that we could place in some of the flowers. Um, going towards the area, as you can see, there's a small gravel path. We had planted some flowers and two little flags to give it some nice look to it. There was also a tree there that was also surrounded by weeds and the Japanese thorn weeds. So we kept that there because we didn't want to get rid of the tree. And it gave it somewhat of a nicer look, I'd say. Um, we planted some of these flowers around the pathway as well, going around the circle, so that we could give it some more of an aesthetic look. We couldn't go around the whole way because part of that would be below the circle and wouldn't be viewable by most people. So we planted two flowers in this, uh, the center. Those two flowers replace the Japanese thorn weeds that were there previously, and the other certain ones around it are for aesthetic look. And then we also have photos of me and everyone else who had come to the project to help work on it. Um, so we have people like my father, my mother, myself, Mayor Hedrick, um, and a lot of my fellow scouts and scout leaders. They had come out on both day one and day two to help with the removal and the placements. So it, it was a lot of work going through all of this, and I'm glad it got approved. Uh, my friends were a really big help. The whole project was something I've been looking forward to getting done, and doing it was a very exciting, I'd say. That's it. I want to <clears throat> thank you, Diego. I appreciate that. I want to tell you if if you as a council have not had the opportunity to go down there, or you as the audience have not had the opportunity to go down there. You need to go down there and see the lasting effects of this. Plus, uh, Tim Ummers and his crew have went back and they've mowed all the way back uh, to the, uh, there's a bridge that crosses uh, the stream back there, back behind uh, Branford Manor. Because this goes from Thomas Road all the way to Grant Estates. And it's open, it's open now so that you can walk through it. 
and Diego and his crew did a tremendous job. And let me tell you something, there, the, <clears throat> the stone, the gravel, I'm not talking, I'm talking big gravel, was several, I, I, I don't know how deep it is, it's gotta be feet deep. And so we're trying to get these weeds out of there and we're digging and clawing and, and everything else. Everybody was working hard. It was, I didn't get there the first day, second day I was there to help. But uh, it, it, if you haven't been there, you really gotta get by. It is, it is tremendous. So I thank you for one, picking this project and two, completing this project. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you for you know helping me out with the project as well. Any questions or comments from the council? It's a great job you did. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, it's Go really nice to have <clears throat> people from the community be interested in um, making it better because we can't, just like you know we've said before, we can't see every area that needs improvement all the time. We don't have necessarily the resources always to do it. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, as a Connecticut Master Gardener, this kind of project is near and dear to my heart. Did you... Um, get donations for the flowers or did you fundraise to buy them um so we did receive donations i know my scout master he pitched in fifty dollars and that's what i used to buy the main flowers the ones i had placed around the circle mm -hmm. and it was just enough because that's the amount i wanted to pay in for okay very good awesome i can't wait to check it out anyone else okay that's it thank you again Diego. No <clears throat> okay, a couple of things that uh, I want to make the council aware of. One, uh, electric boat is in the middle of doing construction on building 600, and I said uh, the Columbia class building. And one of the things that has resulted from that is the removal of some dirt. There's a large dirt pile on the south end of the yard up by Eastern Point Road. If you've driven by there, you've probably seen that. The problem is it is not 100% completely covered. And so when the wind blows, it blows sand into the neighbor's yards and, and on their cars and houses and, and everything else. Uh, and the Authorization to work was authorized through planning through the planning and zoning committee commission, and they are allowed to work basically 20 hours a day. They can work till two and start at six. The problem is it is extremely loud, and uh, the city doesn't have a noise ordinance. We are we use the state's ordinance, and we are work, looking at that ordinance now. We're talking to electric boat. We are also working with. The, uh, the neighbors, we have some that are on Eastern Point Road, some that are on Chapman and Nichols. And we hear you. We, I have not called the president of uh, Electric Boat yet, but he is on my list to call tomorrow. We sent them a letter so that they could evaluate this. And we basically gave them 15 days. It's not a cease and desist, it's a voluntary compliance. And then we'll go from there. So I wanted to counsel to know that and for the constituents to, under, to know this. The last thing I want to say is uh, a sad note. I know some of you uh, knew Rex Rutenbach. He was the general manager of TVC here in the building. He died suddenly this weekend. And so our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and to his extended family at Thames Valley Communications. Uh, I went over there today, this morning, to talk to the, uh, to the employees and express condolences. And uh, the GM, there's a new GM here. He was the GM that was here before Bill. Was here, Bill Foster, I think it is. Uh, he is here uh, in the interim to see the conclusion of the sale. So they are uh, uh, working through this now, it was a shock to everybody, they are a small firm and uh, uh, very family oriented. So my thoughts and prayers go out to them. Uh, communication reports, Councilor McCabe. Uh, no report. No. Councilor Damper. I attended the uh, Serenity Ball at the yes, Mystic did. Marriott over the, over on Saturday. Uh, it was an event to help celebrate sobriety for those 
individuals um, struggling with addiction. There was a great turnout, had just under 600 people in attendance. Wow. 587, I believe, total. Wow. Sure. Tremendous. Yeah. Great event. Councilor Devon. Nothing to report. Councilor Ortiz. No, sir. Councilor Carter. Nothing to report. Uh, Court Patrick. Nothing. Okay, thank you. Committee referrals, do we have any committee referrals? Okay, we will, uh, hearing none, we'll go to new business. Councilor McCabe. Resolution R-20-2-15. Therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council approve the 2020 City of Broughton Recreational Department user fees. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, <clears throat> open this up to discussion. Councilor Deep. I would like to move that we uh, amend the rules for the half price parking to be only for non city residents from five to eight rather than all. Um, I'm going to go five or six. It's, well, the thing is, if we go six, then we have the ha we have to change more language, and I don't know that that makes logistical sense. I think it makes more sense to pick one, either five or six. Okay. And I I don't um, I mean since it's already five to eight, right. I think that makes the most sense to okay. say five to eight. We charge non-residents half price, and then city residents uh, would be able to get in free. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Wait, okay. can, can, can you, you have to explain that. Well, we got a motion and a second. So now we have discussion. Okay. So, oh, a couple things. Oh, I want all conversation. We were going to, we talked about this at Caucus. I want all conversations to go through the chair. And we're not going to get into a discussion with each other. Uh, that's not how we're going to do it. Make sure your hands raised. I recognize you. And we'll go from there. Where are we? Well, actually, it's your motion. Explain your motion now that you, now that we have a second. And then Councilor Carr will go to you next. So I know we've had a lot of discussion on the hours, um, and I know several people have received complaints. We received. Um, I actually went back through notes and meeting minutes from previous years. Um, there was a letter in 2018 sent by the Eastern Point Property Owners Association president expressing that they were unhappy that the uh, rule was changed and I, um, can I just read the letter? Yes. Okay. Um, so in two, May 29th, 2018, there was a letter addressed to the Beach and Parks Committee and sent to the City Council, uh, Parks and Rec Director, and the Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Dear Mr. Restivo and members of the Beach and Parks Committee, I am writing on behalf of the Eastern Point Property Owners Association regarding the evening entry fees at Eastern Point Beach. The fees instituted in 2017 appear to have resulted in a significant decrease in the number of people using the play equipment, beach, and park after 6 p.m. Minority families seem to be the most significantly impacted. The entry fees also reduce customers at the snack bar and discourage casual use of the facility by electric boat and Pfizer employees after work hours. The beach entry fees were accompanied by increased use of the parklet on Shore Avenue across from the golf course. The parklet lacks adequate seating, play equipment, safe beach access, and dedicated oversight, and has no sanitary facilities. Additional use of the parklet also contributed to parking and litter problems. It is unfortunate that a community asset like Eastern Point Beach is being underutilized. We urge the Beach and Parks Committee to consider eliminating or reducing the evening entry fees at Eastern Point Beach so this beautiful facility can be enjoyed by all. Um, I went and looked in the minutes. There is no response to this letter. Uh, the Beach and Parks Committee, there's a note that it was read at the meeting, but there's no notes about discussion or, or that anyone um, responded, actually, uh, to the letter to, to the resident. Uh, I, th that doesn't mean that it didn't happen, but there's no um, notes of it in the minutes right. um, okay. where it was read. I think that... Um, you know, the, like I said, there's been a lot of discussion, and I know there was discrepancy from different people of how many people have complained about it or how, how often it's come up, um, and um, in the impact of it. 
looking at the the revenue it's less than three percent of the beach um, revenue and I think if we rather than just letting everyone come in free if we restrict it and have non-residents pay half price after five we're still bringing in a little revenue to compensate and keep the maintain the facilities uh, but we're giving the benefit to as uh, Miss Kelly stated earlier there are residents who pay taxes and the beach is not fully funded on its own the tax dollars go to pay the difference of what isn't made in income so part of their tax dollars is going to maintain the beach and if they can't afford a beach pass or um, you know choose not to buy one because they have other expenses that they deem more uh, important they should be able to use it for at least a little bit of time I think um, so that's my opinion okay Councilor Carter well well look, I mean I was gonna respond to that letter I mean I don't just a general statement I don't know how I don't know what proof it says that it's, it's affecting minorities I mean that's I don't know that's just one thing the other thing um I'm gonna say is I think doing this without and I know time is time is a, a, of, of an essence I get that I understand that um the parks and rec director um has to uh you know we have to get this approved it's, it's we're, we're moving on and on and on you know with that said I think we said that last time and we went back to the committee and the committee all um, made it clear um with the exception of one individual that you heard earlier right which I was also going to mention if she didn't show up today um but the parks and rec committee made it clear that this isn't revenue driven it's to maintain the beautification of the beach um that's where that that's why this exists you know and me um I am one that always questions even when I came on to the or had a part of the committee or chair of the committee I mean I, I, I asked the director everything when it comes to fees when it comes to minorities uh, anybody that can you know just a general affordability um, and it made sense what they said to me I think we have to look at the beach do we look at the even the restaurant at the beach do we look at it as a restaurant or we do or do we look at it as a service or an amenity you know we don't uh, gain any res revenues as, as a city with the uh, with the concession stand you know so our fee our city fee um the same fee that you know that goes towards the maintenance all this stuff keeps the programs low everything helps everything you know and we haven't even reached we haven't even touched like i said i'm going to go back to minimum wage we haven't even touched that stuff you know so anything anything that can help um I think it's a gain and I think we have to look at it I think people that look at it um and we had several presentations of uh of the upkeep and of the new things that we're going to be getting down at the beach the the, the bathrooms that were the new bathrooms that we're going to get you know everything comes with a cost and I think that was the underlying thing that I got from the committee you know and that made it okay to say yeah you're right you know um do we want to come back 10 years to nothing I mean do we do we want to come back 10 or 15 years to to nothing I mean it's beautiful because the, we maintain it and that comes with a cost nowadays nowadays everything comes with the cost um and I think if we look at it at, at in that light um it, 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 it you'll see it differently I know that uh, prior to the last committee meeting we did open up we opened up to the council members to come aboard we also opened it up to the uh, the public to come aboard and it's been said that other people are complaining about fees you know I've been on the uh, I've been on the council for uh, my third year and me personally um, I haven't got one one person has never has come to me and mentioned anything about the uh, the gate fees um, and even this last month and a half and I've made it known that nobody's come to me and nobody still has come to me yet so I don't I, I'm not sure how much of a problem it is but I do know that doing this without going back to the committee, I think as a council, me personally, I think that's a complete undermine of authority. And I think that if we make a change with these things that are coming back, it needs to go back to the committee. I'm not comfortable with, um, 
with approving any amendment or anything, any changes without going back to them, other than what they had stated and come to and what they what they what they stated at the last committee, and that was either keep it the same, keep everything the same, with a possible reduce re reduction in fee, or just stop all amenities and or stop the restaurant, close the bathrooms, um, and me as a council member, I have to. Um, it makes sense to me. If it if 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 if, if it is just all right, we're going to come see the sunset and we want to walk and see the sunset. Okay, then you don't need the restaurant. And you don't need the bathroom, you know. But so we have staff that we have to pay for. We have upkeep that we have to pay for, and that that comes from somewhere. Councilor Ortiz, um, we have. Uh, a community. Um, Amongst all these beautiful homes and very expensive homes and golf courses, and there's a small community, okay, that it is, it lives, it lives under the poverty uh, line. So if we, we are here, we're here. Maybe we don't come to the meeting and we don't we don't get into count into into the chairs and maybe it's 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 a it's a, a language barrier. But I see I see minorities struggling amongst the beautiful homes. Okay, Councillor Depot. Um, <clears throat> I just want to respond a little bit um, to what Councillor Carter. Uh, to some of the, the points. Okay. Um, so, I did, uh, well, the minimum wage thing, I, we discussed minimum wage, and I know we've slightly increased the, the fees for other park, um, like the uh, rental of pavilions and some other, other items to kind of compensate for that, and I know that that's been on, everyone, everyone's been discussing the minimum wage issue. Um, so I know that we're on top of that. Uh, the revenue issue, I have asked over and over again, what is the driver of the fees? I've asked the everyone on the Beach and Parks Committee, the Parks and Rec Director, and the, the answer has been, it's not revenue, but it's to maintain the park. But that's the same, Thing. If you're saying that it costs money to maintain the park, that what you're saying is we need more revenue to maintain the park. Now the the amount charging half price for residents and non-residents is around three percent of the beach budget. So if we were to reduce the um, that amount by half, because it's about half half and half non-residents and city residents coming in after five o'clock. Um, I mean, that's, it's a small, small amount. Um, I mean, even if those numbers aren't exactly correct, if it's 3.5% or 4%, it's the, the number of cars coming in minus the amount it costs us for the gatekeeper person, which is about $1,500 over the season. Um, it, the amount of that revenue is so small, the benefit to allowing people who can't afford the beach that year to be able to come in after five o'clock that our city residents, I think is worth the small cost of the city. The city's already paying a bulk of the cost. The, the beach does not pay for itself. It's already coming out of tax dollar the tax dollars. So to tack on another 1% or 2% or 3%, which is a small amount, so that you know a portion of our population can use the beach for free for a little bit of time in the evening, to me is well worth it. And I think that, you know, I know that not everyone has heard complaints, but I've had a lot of complaints about this. And m my my goal is to be able to have a rationale to be able to say, you know what, it's not gonna be free for everyone. And I've gotten complaints from non-residents as well. And at least I can go back and say, you know, we can't make it free for everyone, but we're gonna benefit our city residents and make it free for them. At least then I can give them an answer that's not, well, we needed an extra 2% of revenue, so we we wanted to charge everyone. 
Yeah, I, I wasn't. Gonna, I don't want to go back and forth. <coughs> I just want to just make it just make it clear. Um, well, let me ask you a question. I, if if <coughs> if we if we decided to move this to another meet to another date, and it went back to Beach and Parks, do you think we'd have a different result? I this, this, based on the two conversations, the, well, the well, last two meetings, and well, the tone is, and tenor well, this is what I this of is what, those meetings. This is my my view on it, Mayor. I think that that the uh, the committee has a lot more information than anybody on this council, and I think that I think that they put a lot of work into this. Yep. So I think any one of us to change what they come out of it, I think I I, I, I don't think that's right. So I think that if anything, I think we need to go. We would either have to go back to them or we just go ahead and move on what came out of their committee, which was either. If somebody wants to use the beach, right? We're not stopping from anybody use the beach to use the beach. They don't have to pay for it, but the amenities aren't going to be there. That's what they said. Well, you know, the, the, the restaurants aren't going to be there. The bathrooms are going to be locked, so people can go down to the beach, but we have to pay for those people that are that, that are there. We have but, we have to pay for that. But I guess my question is, why are we tying all those things together? I mean, it's almost you got to do it this way or you got to do it that way. There's nowhere in the middle. And it's like we're saying, okay, the people that come in between five and eight, those are the bad guys. We can't let them in. But at eight o'clock, suddenly all the good guys come in, and it's not a problem. It doesn't make sense to me. Can I answer that? Well, yeah, but hold on. Yes. Well, you, well, you stopped me though, and I was talking. All right. Well, so, well but I'm a chair, so so I oh, get to do that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, can I'm, you tell me when I can continue. I will. All right. We basically what. The council is faced with now is do you have enough information or is is the beach and parks committee basically saying do it our way or there's going to be heck to pay right they're saying nope if you don't do this you got to shut everything down and i'm not sure that's the right answer so you know i'm trying to get to a version of yes whatever yes is but I don't think it's either you open it all the time and or you shut everything down. I think that there could be a version of yes, and that's what I'm trying to, to see if the council we can get to. Councilor Carter, I'll let you finish. Okay. And, and what I'm saying, Mayor, is I, 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 I understand what you're saying, and I agree on that, but to get to that, we have to actually meet together. I don't think it's unfair for us to say this is what we're doing when we're not talking to them. When we had the committee meeting, I made a statement and I said, you know, if somebody wanted to say something, you know, we, we all had the option to come to that committee meeting. That is the time to talk to them in that committee meeting. I understand everybody's busy. I miss a ton of meetings. I miss a ton of things, right? But what all I'm saying is that we owe it to them. They put in their hard work. We, if we're making any changes to what they, that, that's coming out of their committee, right? If we're gonna vote on this, right? I don't see how we can vote on this unless we talk to them Right, and we have those questions that, that you just asked me. We have those questions. How is that any different than receiving one email against and one citizen petition for? How's that any different? One email against what? Well, so I, I don't know so why he sent that. I well, think I think he sent that because nobody showed up uh, to, well, this, to the but, committee. Meeting. But what you're saying well, is Mayor the, council, the council. For the I got that. I like I said, I'm a chair. I'm running this meeting. Here's the deal. The, you're saying the council's got to go to the Beach and Parks Committee, but the Beach and Park Committee could also come to this meeting. That's, right? right? They you're could right, very well come right. to this meeting. So it's important that we work together to get this through. This has become an emotional issue. shouldn't be, but it is for, for some reason. Councilor Depot. So I think... <clears throat> I don't disagree that if you're passionate about an issue, you should attend a meeting. That's why I've been at the last two Beach Parks meetings, because this issue is important to me. The question to me isn't what's, what does everyone think is better for the beach? The question should be what is better for the residents? And I don't see how it serves the residents better to say, let's just shut it all down then if we can't agree. That's not that doesn't serve the residents at all. 
I think that you know, I did bring it to Beach and Parks, and I know at the meeting that um, Councilor Carter that you missed, it was brought up and, and talked about at length. And I know that the Beach and Parks Committee has spoken about it before. I spoke to Ms. Kelly, the one dissenting member of the Beach and Parks Committee, um, and she's she, you know, mentioned that she's brought it up and gets shot down every time. There's no, there's been no compromise. I tried to even get. Um, just a little bit of understanding and again like i said my goal is to be able to explain to a resident why we can't change the rule it's the same as you know other rules that we've changed i was at the um, beach this weekend i rented the zbierski house and there were at least a dozen people walking their dogs in the winter which was really nice to see which we weren't able to do before so to me even though not on the beach just on in the no, i got two calls this weekend that there were three on the beach well, um, but you know, it's there are more than just the people that complain benefit when we change the rules to something that we should be able to see benefits all the residents. I didn't get a dozen complaints about the dog thing last year, not being able to walk the dogs. I got maybe four to six, but and other people got complaints as well. But because we changed the rules, there's many more residents are using the beach and walking on the sidewalk when it's a nice. You know, even though it's cold, it's nice and sunny. Um, so it's the same with this this rule. I've had several complaints, and then the people who aren't complaining often don't know who to complain to. This will benefit more city residents, and I don't. I guess I don't understand the argument against if it's just to provide the revenue to pay to have someone there till eight o'clock. The the purpose of we vote on budget. Items, so it's our decision whether or not we want to spend an extra one to two percent, or however whatever the percentage is. It's a very small number to pay for the attendant to stay at the beach until eight, so we can close the bathrooms, so that the bathrooms are available. That is our choice, and this has gone back to committee multiple times, and they have they expressed that they are not willing to change this rule. So I, while I do think it's ideal to get consensus from the Beach and Parks Committee. I think our part of our job is also oversight. And if we think that that rule is not being properly discussed or um, maybe just we're looking at it differently, it is our job to oversee these rules. We are the ones that vote on them. So while it would be ideal to get a consensus from Beach and Parks, it's not procedurally required and they have expressed that they don't want to change that rule. 10 seconds or on? Carter. In this, I just wanna, I, I, I feel like I have to, I, I don't know if I'm sounding like I'm trying to protect the Beach and Parks Committee, because it's it, it sounding like, I mean, to me, this is what I heard from them. I heard that to them, that they answered that question proposed by Council Depot, the reason on why it was driven. And they say, because of, they need to maintain and maintenance. That that's what I left from. And I've heard a couple times from a couple different people that, okay, we have to come up with some, some something other than, okay, if you don't get your way, then you're just shutting down the amenities. That, which I, I think those statements are extremely unfair as well because that's not what they're saying. They said that it's where they stated that there's wear and tear on the facilities. If people are going to be on those facilities and they have to be shut down, that didn't. I didn't leave last committee thinking that okay, if they're not gonna, they're not gonna get their way, then they're just gonna shut everything down. In that letter, it stated they don't know how we can keep the services open if somebody's not paying for them. So I think it's really unfair to make those statements that okay, the committee doesn't get their way, so they're gonna shut down the services. That's not what was said inside the uh, committee, and I stand by that. If we want to just vote on this, I just want to make it be known that. Um, I, I'm for what the committee had stated and what they said, and that was either for either to maintain, charge some type of fee, and to mind you, it is free for city residents. You can walk onto that beach. You can go to that beach for free. The, it, the beach doesn't charge city residents for any at any point during the day. It's free, 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 free. Um, so I don't know if people know that as well. Um, but I really just want to move on from this. Let's just move on. Any comments? 
Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mary, can I get you to come up here? Because i got a couple questions for you. I said I need this, right? Yes. Okay. Not too long ago, we let people on, right? We shut the gate. We just recently changed it in the last few years, right? This would be our fourth season if we did it. Okay. Did we have a problem before with the maintenance of people? I mean, you and I have talked, and the impression I got from you is that if we went to something like this at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, and citizen the residents could drive in for free and non-residents paid what's currently listed in there half price that we could still have revenue we'd still be able to maintain the restrooms and the concession stand really doesn't have anything to do with this right because we don't run a concession stand somebody else runs a concession stand so <clears throat> if we went to something like the five o'clock, five to eight, where the residents came in free and then there was half price parking for the non residents. How detrimental is that going to be? We'd still have maintenance issues at the beach. The reason why this was looked at well, in what, 2016 what, just. What does that mean, maintenance issues? So, I don't think we know uh, what that means. There's an abundance of trash. There's an abundance of use of paper towel, toilet paper, hand soap, electricity. The concession stand, and this was just prior to the, the, the prior people who rented or leased our concession stand. You say the concession stand doesn't play into this, but the influx of people who used to come in after 6 o'clock at no charge were people who wanted to come have dinner at the amenity of the beach, which is the concession stand, which is one of multiple amenities that we offer at the beach. The only amenity that leaves at 6 o'clock right now at the beach is our lifeguards, but every other amenity that the rest of your residents pay for and non-residents pay for is still there. Um, I use this word at the Beach and Parks Committee. Some people see there's a value to things. People coming into the beach, not that... Uh, there's a, some people respect the garbage cans. Some people respect the receptacles or where things go, even up on the porch, and unfortunately, not everybody does. And that's across the board. We have that with dogs. As much as we have dogs at the beach right now, we're still picking up. People aren't picking up after their dogs. Um, so there, there was a value look, when the committee looked at this of what else, what other service, this is a valued service to keep it open till eight because they're still getting all the amenities except for the fact that there's no lifeguards on the beach. There was research done by, which was brought back to the committee this past month regarding what other beaches in our area do and Ocean Beach is only the only beach comparable to what we do in regards to the amenities because Waterford Beach doesn't have concession and or restrooms that uh, stay open later than what their lifeguards are there. Ocean Beach is the only one does and they still and they charge half price to park. So that was all brought to them back in 2016 uh, before because this is 17. It should be yeah for so 17 year 2017 is when it went in. But if but if I don't know what the impact would be. Well, so here's the thing. If somebody doesn't use the trash can or if someone does not pick up after their dog on the beach, I can't, you know, when they come in, we're gonna, you're going to screen everybody and say, okay, are you going to put your trash in a trash can? We don't do that. So there are going to be those people. There, there used and there's to going be, to be a yes. percentage of people. There's going to be, there was a higher percentage of those people prior to the gate staying open to eight. This is going to be how I'm going to address it. There was, you know, there was, there's just an influx of people that just came in because they could come in for free. And I'm not, some of them might have been residents. So if there's I'm not sure if they're all non-residents. I, I don't know. I can't speak on behalf of the committee in regards to the option that was put forth because right. they haven't had a chance to hear what it is. But if they're city residents, shouldn't they have access to the beach? City residents have access to the beach. Well, only if they walk on. Ride a bike, ride a scooter. I, but, I mean, but they, yes, and or get dropped off. Public transportation. There's means to get because there. Because we don't have a lot of off-street parking where no, they can park, no, right? No, we do not. Not in that area. It, well, it's well, yeah, it's posted resident parking only. Right. So, 
if people wanted to come from other areas of the city uh, that did not live in the immediate area, then they would have to drive and it would be a place to put them. And that's what opening this up would do, would allow them to come in. Councilor Depot. I understand the maintenance issue, which I, it's just a different way of saying it costs money to run the beach. So I'm not sure why we keep saying, you know, just using different terms, beautification, maintenance. Those are issues, and I understand that. The, the thing is that it all costs money, and I, and I also agree, you know, if people are not picking up their trash of, of, as they should and all of that, in my opinion, we should find a creative way to make a difference, maybe people don't like using the trash can that we have maybe it's you know if it's the kind that's like dirty when you touch it i don't like throwing trash in those cans when it's like someone else has spilled something on it and so you have to touch dirt to put your trash away like maybe there's other creative solutions we can find that will make people more likely to put their trash in in the can um or something like that i don't think the answer is to say well you people are not responsible so we're not going to let you use the beach for free I, I think that's the wrong answer i don't think that was the intent but but that is certain and i understand that's not exactly how it's being presented but the what you're saying is and what the committee and the committee did say this that there it's a maintenance issue that the there's a lot of trash on the on the beach and that was part of the reason they wanted to um start charging so that we could pay for the staff ends up having to do more work or pick up or whatever um that's all i'm not saying that we should shrink the beach budget i'm saying that we should use the the money to maintain the beach you know we're already paying out of taxpayer funds to fund beach and parks so instead of charging city residents that extra couple percentage points that they would have to pay half pay half, half price after five use the taxpayer dollars we already have for that that's what i'm saying i'm not saying don't to give you less money in your budget to maintain the beach that's not what I think would be appropriate either because we will probably have more people using the beach. We will need people there to maintain the beach. Uh, just a, a point of reference, the money that we receive at the beach goes back to the general fund, so it doesn't come back to my budget. So everything that we have to budget for is a line item in the budget. There is a, an area in the budget where it shows all our revenue for parks and recreation, parks. So parks is broken down one spot and recreation is another spot, which decreases that dollar amount that goes against the mill rate, um, but it helps us offset some of the expenses, but not, um, it doesn't go back to the beach per se. Well, I, I understand that, but the, the point is that the revenue that Beach and Parks makes, because people pay for some of our programs, is not, doesn't equal in the budget what Beach and Parks costs the city. The city already supplements, the, the city pays for Beach and Parks, and some of the revenue we receive offsets that. It already is not 100% funded by itself. So my point is the difference in cost is absorbed by the city rather than billing the city residents again half price after five who are paying tax dollars that we're already putting into Parks and Rec. Does that make sense? I think so. Was that not, do you want to I, I, say I, it differently? For, so, I, I, so, I, I, so my point is right now, so say the say Beach and Parks cost $100,000 to run. All the programs, um, these are made up numbers. All the programs bring in $65,000. All that goes into the general fund, it still costs $100,000 to run Beach and Parks. So what my point is, okay, well, if, we, if it costs an extra $2,000 to offset and let residents come in for free for the summer 2000 compared to 100 is two percent it, it's just it's if you look in at, my opinion yep. that cost offset is not important enough to exclude all of those people who can't afford the beach after six o'clock i know you, i wish you asked me to share the statistics, statistics that i had for the beach and parks committee that we never got to but that's only a portion of the revenue that we would lose it's only at the gate we've had a the last year, three years, we've had an influx of, we've actually sold out of beach passes because obviously people are buying them. So there's another set of, rev there's another set of revenue that hasn't been calculated yet because we don't know how many people have taken upon themselves the last three years to buy a beach pass so they can get in past six o'clock and not have to pay the gate rate. 
Um, so, and that, that dollar amount hasn't been calculated because it, it just, it's, we'd have to, we don't, we don't pull people when they come to buy the beach pass when they're, why they're buying it. We just, you know, there, there are, you know, people who do, we've had an influx, we've sold out the last three years, both resident and non-resident beach passes. Okay, so, Ortiz. Um, I'm sorry. Two things. Okay. Let me see if I can remember the second one. Um, you say that those people, they go after time, after six or after eight or whatever, to the beach and they litter and they do things that are not supposed to. Do we know who those people are? Because we need to approach them and let them know it's not acceptable to do this at the beach. At this moment, no, because we have had a gate rate the gate went to eight o'clock, so those those numbers I wouldn't have over the last three years because we haven't had that influx. Another thing I remember, with all due respect, I don't think that we get all the information that we need from you when you come to us. I guess, you know, we have, we ask questions, I guess they're new, or you don't expect them, you know, and then we have to, okay, Mary, you have yep. to come back with more information. Some of the information I come back to with, especially the rules and regulations, is I'm coming forward with the, rules, the recommendations that the Beach and Parks Committee made. They're not, my ultimate job here as the director is to enforce whatever and put in place. They're the ones who put the recommendations in place, so I'm trying to share with you their thoughts right. and, you know, and give that information to you from a, a, you know, a, a volunteer on another committee who's made these recommendations to do that. And so it's not sometimes my thoughts, it's trying to I articulate understand. theirs mm -hmm. and give that information to you. Anyone else? So we... Can I, <laughs> Can I go, go back, sit down? No. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So we have a motion and a second on an amendment to the rules. Can you review your motion? Uh, to move to change right now the rules in several places, I think. We're on the user fees. Just um, so you know. Right, on we, user fees. Okay. Oh, we're, yes. We're Sorry. <laughs> no. Good clarification. Because they're very similar and they look very similar. In we're, on, the yeah, we're on the first motion. Um, or maybe I'll need fees if only one spot. This is the time. Um, from 5 to 8 p.m. it's currently half price at parking. Uh, so my motion is to change that to be half price parking for non-city residents and free for city residents from 5 to 8. Mr. Mayor. I, I would like to know the I know that there are two different things but I just so um, the concession stand use students to help us as employees yes who cleans the beach you know like is it we have people for that or we also use students for that we use staff right and sometimes the staff are college students Sometimes they're 17 year old, right? And uh, sometimes you're, you're full time park maintenance people. Weekends, so it's, it's a usually, mix. Yeah, it's a mix. During the week, it's like but a it's seasonal. Not, go ahead. During the week, it's like a, it's a, like a seasonal staff and or summer staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturdays and Sundays, it's the full time staff. They come in to do the beach in the Washington Park. They come in empty garbage and clean bathrooms at both facilities on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. At, Sundays, Saturday, yeah, and it's, it's Saturdays, it's time and a half, and Sundays, it's double time. And holidays, it's double time also for the full-time staff members. Do we know how much they get an hour, or is that improper to ask? Well, we, we know what that is, but I don't know the test. Why is that important to this? Because if we, have, if we have high schoolers in the concession, then we could hire the, the students for summer. Well, <coughs> the... The concession stand is separate. Yes, it it's is. It's over here. Yes. Mary does have summer help uh, that she does, but also the union contract that we have is part of what drives okay. 
what they're doing on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. Okay. Is that correct? Okay. Is everybody clear <coughs> on what the motion on the on the amendment? <clears throat> okay. All in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> Opposed? Opposed. Abstentions? Abstaining. Okay. So we have three, one, and one. Motion fails. The amendment fails. Because mm -hmm. according to the charter, <coughs> we have to have. Uh, Four affirmative votes. Is there any further discussion on resolution R 20 2 15? Okay, all in favor say aye. So, so the amendment the amendment failed. Right. So now we're back to the original motion. Oh, okay. Which is what you read. And that's the original motion, R-20-2-15. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? This is the original motion, which is, let me be clear. Therefore, we have resolved the mayor and council approve a 2020 City of Groton Recreation Department user fees. That's the motion that is on the table in second. Okay. <clears throat> no further discussion. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Opposed. Two. So one, three. Opposed. So one, four, three opposed. And I'm abstaining. And we're going to abstain. So it's one, three, one. That motion fails. Okay. <clears throat> so that motion fails. We will move on to the next motion. Councilor Stanford. Resolution 20-2-18. Therefore, be resolved that the mayor council approve the rules and regulations at Eastern Point Beach. Oh, hold on. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Therefore, be resolved that the mayor council grant a one-year extension of license and waive the security deposit for Broaden Public Schools Food Service de Department. 1300 Flanders Road, P.O. Box K, Groton, Connecticut, to operate a refreshment facility at Eastern Point Beach for the 2020 season. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. This was discussed here in the Committee of the Whole. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, Councilor Depot. 19. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I get that? Okay. Yep. Resolution R-20-2-19. Therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council approve the rules and regulations at Eastern Point Beach for the year 2020. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Councilor Depot. Um, I, I mean, I have the same issue with the rules and regulations that we have with the fees. I think that city residents should be able to get in free if not after five at you know at some window at the end of the day um i don't know that we need to go through the of me making an amendment do you want to make an amendment you can have the amendment and we can vote on the amendment and then vote on the i mean if you want to do that we can do that or we can vote on the sure i move that we amend the rules to be Free for city residents from 5 to 8 p.m. Half price parking for non residents. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second for discussion. Okay, you've went through your discussion. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor say aye. Okay. aye. Right. Of the, this is of the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, so we have three ayes, noes. One, staying. I'm staying. Okay, so we have three, one, one. Motion fails. Correction, the amendment fails. Now we are back to the 
Okay. We're back to the discussion of the original motion, which is therefore be resolved. Mayor and Council approve the rules and regulations of East Point Beach for the year 2020. We can have further discussion, or you can have another amendment put on the on the on the table. Can I ask a question to you, or no? Sure. It's, so it's open for discussion. What is the exact difference? Because these are the rules. So what's can you? So we. Eastern Point Beach has rules and regulations yep. that has some fees inside of it. Okay, yep, yep. The user fees that was, um, didn't go anywhere. Yep. It has all our fees, so it had fee, fee changes in there other than the, the language for the gates. Yep. We also had increase in playground fees and we also had a change in our pavilion fees mm -hmm. that have now also been not approved. So there, there's, there's things that, hap that are happening fairly quickly enough that we have no dollar amount to tell people what they're going to pay for with yep. the user fee there is about to be a sense of yep. urgency and that is going to drive a decision i will make that decision maybe now but probably tomorrow on whether it goes back to beach and parks or whether we have a special meeting with beach and parks and the council because this is getting Cumbersome. Okay, Councillor Depot. I just wanted, did want to point out, and I don't know if I missed this part, but because Mr. Shear is in the audience, that we um, there is an amended Rule 25 about allowing bikes. There's a new recommendation brought to you, yes, in today's packet. Right, and the recommendation mm -hmm. was to change that rule, so that did make its way from the Beach and Parks Committee um, in the. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion? We will now vote on resolution number. This is 19. Let me make sure. On yeah. resolution 2 R 20 2 19. Everybody know what we're voting on. The amendment failed. This is on the resolution. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And we have one aye. All opposed. Opposed. Oh. We have three opposed and one abstention. So one, three, one. Motion fails. <coughs> so. Okay. I will get back to you tomorrow after I talk to the director on where we're going to go with this and what we're going to do with this. Okay? But right now, two of the motions failed. The one motion that passed was for the concession stand. Okay? I need an executive session to enter into correction. I need a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1-206 ECHO and 1-2109 to discuss union negotiations to include council and uh, HR director on Monday have it easy. So moved. Second. Second. And there will be a there will be a uh, a motion on the table. There will be a motion when we come back. We are out of executive session at 9:23. We are back <coughs> into regular session. Uh, Councilor Ortiz, will you read the next motion? Uh, no, no. You need to uh, suspend the rules to add. Oh, yes, you're right. I do. Sorry. I need a motion to suspend the rules to add resolution R-20-2-20 to the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Councilor Ortiz. Thank you, Clerk Patrick. Resolution-20-2-20. Therefore, be resolved in accordance with the provisions of Connecticut General Statutes, Section 7-474B. The Mayor and the City of Groton Council hereby accept the aforesaid agreement and that the Mayor is hereby authorized and directed to execute said agreement on behalf of the City. So I move. I so move. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second.
We have a motion to second we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming out. Linda, thank you. And Kirkpatrick, thank you very much. <laughs>